In chapter 10, we focus on a lot of concepts with square roots, one of which is how to graph a square root function. A square root function is a function that obviously contains a square root, but one important concept is that the independent variable, variable meaning the x value, is in the radicand. And the radicand is the number that's underneath the square root. So the x has to be underneath the square root for it to be a square root function. And the most basic one is the one that's graphed, y equals the square root of x. Since the values of the radicand in the square root function can't be negative, because you can't take the square root of a negative number, the domain must be all real numbers as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. So just like our parabolas, we can still shift the graph up and down and left and right, but the number under the radical, this value right here, has to be positive when you do it. Now, when we look down in example 1, that doesn't mean that x has to be positive. It just means that the quantity x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I kind of helped give away the answer because we have to find the domain of this function. So the domain is where all the values for under the radical sign are greater than or equal to 0. So basically I'm solving x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0 because this quantity can't be less than 0 or else you would get um, no real solution. You would get an error message in your calculator. So the values for x are that x has to be greater than or equal to 5. So if you were to go to graph this, the graph wouldn't exist at values of x lower than 5. In example 2, we're going to graph our functions. But first, we have to make a chart. Obviously, anytime you don't know what a graph looks like, you make a table. So if you've noticed, I actually picked specific values to use, and I picked perfect squares, because if I can create a perfect square under the radical, then I know I'm going to have to deal with integers and not decimals. Some of you, when you plug in your numbers, are just plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You're not thinking before you pick a value. Don't just pick random values. Pick specific strategic values that work for your integers. So when I plug in 0... I get the square root of 0 plus 3. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, so that gives me 3. Then when I plug in 1, I get the square root of 1 plus 3. The square root of 1 is 1, so this gives me 4. When I plug in 4, I get the square root of 4 plus 3. The square root of 4 is 2, and so that gives me 5. The square root of 9 plus 3. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6, and I probably can figure out the next one's going to be 7. Let me just confirm. Square root of 16 plus 3. Square root of 16 is 4. And this is much easier than having to plot decimals, which many of you would end up using if you didn't think strategic about the values to plug in. So pause the video and graph your points and create your curve. So there's my graph and it's labeled and I actually ended up having to go by twos because I couldn't fit all the way to 16. And it will create um, kind of like half of a sideways parabola. So you should typically get that. Um, and the reason that it does that is because squares and square roots are inverses of each other. So when you get to algebra two, you'll learn about inverse functions. But an inverse function um, for quadratics is these square root functions because they're inverse operations. The next thing we have to do is to describe the domain and range. So for the domain, it's pretty much any value of x as long as what's under the radical is not negative. So I get um, x is greater than or equal to 0 because x is under the radical, and I can't have a negative. You can also look at the graph, and it starts at the 0 marker. For the range, we're looking at the y values. 
So the possible y value, well, the lowest y value is here at 3, and then we get y values that are greater than 3. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 3. The final thing that we have to do is compare it to the graph of y equals radical x. So I'm going to just quickly sketch it on there because this is the first time we're doing it, so it is helpful to have it on the same grid. So this is y equals the square root of x, and it's also above on the top of your worksheet. And you can see that the whole graph just shifted up five, or I'm sorry, up three. And that's because we talked about how this um, kind of dangling number shifts it up or down. If it were nested inside the radical sign, then it would either move it right or left. Very, very similar to the way a quadratic moves. So if we want to talk about how it compares, we'll say y equals the square root of x plus 3 is 3 units above y equals radical x. We've got one more to graph, and again, you'll notice that when I chose the numbers in the table, I chose specific numbers that would give me integers. So I said to myself, self, what do I need to make this radicand zero? Because I went through the perfect squares, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. So I said, what do I need to make zero? And that was a two. What do I need to make one? And a th I picked three. What do I need to make four? And I picked six. What do I need to make nine? What do I need to make 16? And that's how these numbers came about, because I choose to deal with integers rather than decimals, if I get the choice. So we have to do the same kind of thing. We have to graph, we have to describe the domain and range, and also compare. Now you can use your idea of quadratics and say since it's under the radical sign, it's probably going to move left or right. And also, since this is negative, it's going to be pointing downward. So let's see what that actually looks like to shift it to the side and also point it downward. So why don't you pause the video and plug in the values in the table. And when you have the values in the table, press play, and then we'll graph it together. So now I wrote my work over here, just for those of you that wanted to see how I got my answer. I would not encourage you to do all this nonsense over here. You can just type it in your calculator or do it mentally. Hopefully you don't need a calculator to do minus two, um, but you don't have to show any of the work. Now when you're ready, let's graph it and let's think strategically about what quadrants we need to be in. We're in the quadrant, or quadrants, where the x value is positive and the y value is from 0 to negative numbers. So that's going to be quadrant 4. So you want to actually make a quadrant 4, which is a quadrant we don't typically deal with a lot. Actually, I'm going to make that more on this axis. So I'll put it here. Y, X. All right, when you're ready, let's plot it. So I've got 2, 0, 3, negative 1. Oh, I have to change my scale. Um, I can go by 2s. So 2, 0 is still there, or now is moved. 3, negative 1, 6, negative 2, 11, negative 3, 18, negative 4. So this is what it looks like when it's pointing downward. And again, you're looking for that half parabola. And I have to label it. A couple more things I have to do is I have to describe the domain and range. So the domain in this case is all real numbers, but x has to be greater than or equal to 2 because 2 is the smallest 
x value that I can plug in because if I plug in something that's less than 2, I will get a negative radicand and then it won't give me a real number. In terms of the range, I'm looking at all real numbers, but y has to be less than or equal to 0. My greatest y value is here on the axis at 0. And the final thing that I have to do is to compare. So if you want to flip your um, paper and look at the general graph, y equals radical x, you can. You can also use ideas about quadratics to say y equals negative radical x minus 2 flipped or is facing downward, however you want to say it. and shifted 2 to the right. Remember, it shifted 2 to the right because what do you need to make a 0 inside here? You need a positive 2, so therefore it shifts to the right. If you needed a negative 2 inside there, it would shift to the left. If you have any questions, write these down and ask me when you come to class.